What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of WBR Garage. This is episode two. I'm Chase and behind me is my 2018 Yamaha R6 that I picked up last episode. In today's video, we're going to go over all the issues that that bike has, which is probably going to make sense how I got it for as cheap as I did. And then we're going to go over the build plans for what I plan to do with this bike. I am so excited and I cannot wait to show you guys the concept images that I got a buddy to make. It is so crazy to see what the bike is going to look like. I can't wait to show you guys, but I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Let's get into the video. Before we get into the video, guys, this is WBR Garage, the show where we take regular bikes, turn them into dream bikes, and then we give them away to guys just like you. If you guys want to enter to win what this bike will end up being, just head over to WBRGarage.com, either grab a membership level or some merch, you will get some entries, and the next thing you know it, you could be selected, and we could be flying you out to the shop to win our finished motorcycle. But first, we got to finish it. Luckily, this is season six. I've got five seasons of finished, beautiful motorcycles that I can show you. Check them out. Hey guys, that's what WBR Garage is all about. So let's get into all the issues that this R6 has. There's not as many as normal. So guys, first off, let's talk about purchase price and where I got this bike from. Uh, pretty simple. I just grabbed it off of Craigslist. <laughs> so I was kind of obsessed with this whole R6 project. So for about six months, I was just watching Craigslist. I would check it at least three times a week. I knew I wanted to build an R6 and I was just looking for the right one. Now, this one I ended up grabbing for 10,500 bucks, which at the time, every, and I mean every, R6 on Craigslist was going for a minimum of 14 grand. So when a 10,500 kind of deal popped up, I was like, oh, interesting, okay. Uh, so started looking into it and I still feel okay about the purchase, but put a little asterisk on the screen because that may change drastically. So, uh, so far for doing a money counter, we're in the whole 10,500 bucks, but I think it's going to be worth it. Let's go over all the details. So guys, from the outset, the bike really doesn't look that bad. And the guy that sold it to me said that... It was dropped in a driveway, which is what caused the fairing damage. So as far as fairing damage goes, hopefully you guys can see, it looks like it got attacked by a baby bear. Just like three scratches right there. The top fairing has this kind of stitching done to it to hold it on. So that's only being connected by that. We then have this little... This one's really hard to see. You guys see the the windscreen is cracked right here and the whole thing just wiggles. Well, that's great. So uh, I think, no, I'm gonna stay here. So, you, so we're gonna watch you split your pants as you try to get up. You assume my hips will allow me to get up. <laughs> All right, well, Patrick's gonna be stuck there for the entirety of this episode. So as far as the fairings go, if the bike would have been tipped over, I kind of would have expected more damage on the tail. So I don't really know what's going on with the whole like fell over in a driveway because like, look at the tail. Like there's literally no damage on the tail fairing. From going over the bike, I think that's the majority of the damage. As far as the fairings go, there's a couple things here, but I can't tell, I mean, those must be scratches. So we've got a couple little imperfections here on the side fairing, not a big deal. Part of my plan was to get new fairings anyway, so not worried about that. We'll talk about the fairings that we're gonna get later in the video. Uh, that's fairing damage. Now let's look at a couple other things. All right, so a thing that is super obvious, can you guys tell? This is a perfect example of why when you get a key on your motorcycle, you make sure that this little loop is the only metal because if you have other stuff on your key 
it will rub your top triple. That is all caused by key stuff. Now, if this was my bike, I don't know if I would necessarily worry about that top triple thing uh, because it's just the powder coating that it's been kind of worn off. But we're trying to turn this thing into a dream bike and I've got some really cool ideas for what we can do with that top triple and they are already here in the shop. So we'll talk about those later. Now, uh, next thing is not necessarily damage, but wear, because this bike is super unique in that it is a 2018 R6 that has 22,000 miles on it. I was surprised too. 22,266. For a super sport, generally, we're talking, we're talking generally, these bikes are bought, People ride the absolute piss out of them for a year or two, and then typically they move on to another style of motorcycle. This thing has somehow lived 22,000 miles, and the only damage was a garage or a driveway fall. Honestly, kind of shocked at that. Now, one, that's awesome that somebody has gotten that much life out of an R6. The issue with that is that everything, and I downloaded the user manual, I mean everything, needs to be changed. We're talking fluids, we're talking valves adjusted, air filter. We're literally, <laughs> on the manual, every box is checked at 24,000 miles. So. We're only 2,000 miles away. I'm not gonna build a dream bike and then one of you guys that wins it is like, oh, now I have to get a valve adjustment. You know, we're gonna fix all of that stuff. We're gonna get all of that adjusted. This bike is going to ride like it is brand new by the time we're done with it. I was just kind of shocked at <laughs> the 22,000 miles. As a guy who rode an R6 for years, that is a ton of miles. There is a chiropractor out there that is, that is banking on the bike and how many miles poor rider moving on all right guys moving over to the side of the bike and probably because of the damage uh we do have a really nice yoshi exhaust on here uh, until you look a little close and you realize there's a huge oh you guys can see it perfectly look at that dent that's just sitting right here and that big old scratch now how did damage like that happen from a tip over that's not for me to say. Uh, one, I'm surprised at how good the Yoshi exhaust sounds, uh, and you guys will hear that in future videos. We're not gonna keep a damaged exhaust on a motorcycle that we consider a dream bike. So that exhaust is gonna go away, and uh, we will definitely be replacing that. Again, just strange how some of the damage is there. I don't know if I believe the driveway spill. You guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments. Do you think that's what actually happened? Okay, so the next thing we gotta talk about is the front levers, the brake and the clutch. Now, I just want you guys to take a really good look at the levers that are on this motorcycle, okay? Everybody take note of them. Look at them. Okay, look at me in the eyes when I tell you this. Never buy, never buy these levers. They are terrible. They are they have sharp edges that do not feel good on your fingers. And before we talk about the use of the levers, I need I, it'll just be easier to show you guys when I'm on the motorcycle. So we're going to go for a ride and I'm going to show you what the front brake lever does. It's not good. So guys, I figured it'd be easier to just show you guys here on the R6 than talk about it in the shop. Two of the things that I would like to check into on this bike before I'm giving it away is one, the, and probably the major thing is the brakes. So typically in a nice braking system, I should be able to pull in the brake a little bit to make like an, a minute uh, change of speed. And then if I need heavy braking, I should lay into them a little more. Now I, I need to check if anybody's behind me, but I want you to guys watch how much braking, full braking is. All right, nobody's behind me. Watch this. That's full brake. Could you guys tell that the brake does not move? Like, it maybe a millimeter? I don't know why the braking is so tight. It, uh, make, it makes it so you literally can't, like, feather the brake and really, like, fine-tune your speed. It's like you get all everything or nothing which is not good as you can imagine because it almost makes it so you slam on brakes every time you use the brakes. 
that is not safe at all. One of the other things I want to look into is potentially this clutch. Like, the, the bike getting into gear, there's not an issue with. But when I pull the clutch in, it's just not a smooth actuation. So one of the things I need to do is probably open the clutch up and just look at the friction plates and see what we're looking at in there. I just feel like it should be far smoother than that. I mean, this isn't like a pinnacle level bike. I feel like there should be a little more smoothness with the clutch than that. It, it doesn't really worry me because I've replaced a clutch before. I'm not too worried about actually doing that. As you guys can see, it's the clutch is almost the exact same as the brakes. It doesn't have a lot of in-between. So yeah, that's definitely something we gotta get looked into. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that while we were on the bike. Is this, is this car just not gonna give a shit? Wow, nice job, car. The fuck are you doing? Wow, today. Today is a dangerous day to be on the road, boys and girls. I'm sure you guys know what's up. People just not giving a single shit. Oh my goodness, man. That brake feels crunchy, man. Like, honestly, that's terrible. It is not smooth at all. <laughs> like a damn missile. Listen, man, when I'm riding a psychopathic motorcycle, the least I can have is smooth actuation of a clutch and a brake. And currently, I don't have that at all on this motorcycle. And to make it worse, these levers suck. I'm gonna show you in the shop. I can't move, I can't adjust them with a tool. This is my delivery uh, giveaway Yamaha R6. <laughs> the face, the, all right, okay. That's not bad right now. So as you guys can see, um, I want a little more pull than that. That is not a good thing. Now, to show you the other problem with these levers, they're a little sus. With a lever like that, you would assume, oh, I can just, I can adjust this lever to be how I want, right? At the risk of breaking it or breaking other things, I'm not gonna try anymore. With a tool, I cannot move those. I am not joking in saying I think the person might have JB welded the levers into their location. Maybe they got frustrated that the levers wouldn't stay in position because they look like crap and they don't work well. I don't know what's happening. Those levers are going away. Do not buy those levers, they are so bad. All right, so guys, uh, one of the other things I want to point out is a little bit of damage down here on this cover, which is kind of strange, right? Because the bike, the bike fell on the other side, but we have damage down here on the engine casing. I don't know, not, not my bike. Um, other kind of small weird things that don't matter because of what we're gonna do, which we'll talk about in the build plans, is a lot of uh, wear on the swing arm. If you guys notice, we've got a lot of wear damage right here, right here. It even continues on the other side I don't know if a gorilla did the chain maintenance, but it literally looks like a blind gorilla came in here and just started hitting shit until the rear axle was loose enough. There is this kind of damage, like I call it damage, but like it's just visual damage. There's no structural damage. Even on the like rear guard, you've got all this kind of silver damage. Now, maybe that's a, Somebody rode this bike for 22,000 miles and they kept up with the chain the entire time, which the chain is not kept up with in this current state, but I'm just saying, we're saying hypotheticals. Maybe they did a lot of chain maintenance, you know, maybe one or two times they were frustrated with it, but that swing arm is beat to shit. Not a big deal, don't really care. The final thing that I do care about and could potentially be a big deal, I need to show you guys. I don't know how big the deal it is. You guys are familiar with this screen, right? You guys know those buttons at the top? Yeah. It does, it does have an engine code. Now, it cranks up fine. It rides fine. It makes no weird noises. There's an engine code. 
it cranks up. A, it's the battery. The battery is why it doesn't. I'll, I'll crank it up for you guys. We're going to pretend it's the battery until we're proven otherwise. So, um, when I bought the motorcycle, the guy brought it over. Uh, we met at a gas station and he was like, you know, it doesn't crank up uh, really easily because the battery's almost dead. Which he said he didn't ride it a lot, which is one of the reasons he was selling it. So that checks out. It doesn't love to crank up. That was actually one of the better crank ups the body's ever done. Not gonna fill the shop with gas and fluids and nasty air, but that's, uh, I was actually surprised. I, I think it was camera shy. It just wanted to make sure it uh, sounded good on camera. Most of the time when we crank it up, it wants to, it wants to, it wants to, it stops. And second time, it'll typically crank up. I have ridden it. You know, you guys saw in the first episode, I actually rode it to the shop and it rode fine. I say fine with all of this stuff in mind. But there is an engine code. We will get that solved. We've got a tuner coming in that will tell us what the engine code is. So I'm going to let my anxiety just wisp in the wind until I find out why I need to be worried. As far as the bike itself, that's what's going on. Those are the issues that we have to solve. Now let's... Let's turn the page and get to talk about all the fun things that this bike is going to turn into. All right, guys, so let's talk about build plans for our 2018 Yamaha R6. If you guys are watching this video, I would imagine you are probably familiar with an R1M. We maybe, probably. If not, they look like this. So the R1M is Yamaha's Pinnacle R1, and we'll go into all the details of that. Currently, Yamaha doesn't make an R6M which is a travesty and I think that machine needs to exist, which is why I am going to try and turn this motorcycle into an R6M. The only question is how. So first off, let me introduce you guys to what an R1M is, and then we'll build off of how close we can get an R6M to match the R1. So guys, when it comes to the R1M, it is basically a souped up version of the already amazing R1, which is a incredibly fast motorcycle. R1M is a little faster. Let's go over some of the details. One, it looks like this. Visually, the big deals about the R1M and any of the SP, MT10s and MT09s and stuff like that, Yamaha has very specific design characteristics. If you guys notice on the swing arm, it has this really cool brushed aluminum vibe, which looks awesome. That look is also carried over into the top of the tank as well. On top of that, we then have the blue wheels, we have carbon fiber fairings, and we have blue accents with white emblems all over the motorcycle. That, looks-wise, is what makes an M model, and we're only talking about looks for a second. Um, those are what we are going to try to carry over to our R6, and don't worry, I did not forget, I am going to show you guys those concepts that look cool. Now, price-wise, an R1M costs $26,000. $26,299 is the MSRP. Here are some of the major differences for the R1M. It's got a GPS mapping and lapping technology built in. It's got electronic Olin suspension, has a titanium exhaust, upgraded brakes, magnesium wheels, an up and down quick shifter, carbon fairings, and titanium engine internals to lower the weight. The, what that does is it allows the R1M to actually rev up more than the regular R1 because instead of spinning heavier bits of metal inside the engine, it's spinning titanium so it can rev faster and higher. I've never ridden an R1M, but it seems nuts. So as you guys can see, the R1M is a apex predator when it comes to track day motorcycles. Now, some of that stuff we are able to put into the R6, but some of it we're not. Uh, electronic Olin suspension, there's no way to really tag electronic suspension into an ECU of a motorcycle that's not built for that. So that's a little outside of the scope that we're doing. Uh, and then titanium engine internals, we would have to do an entire engine breakdown to do that. And even then, I don't even know if that's kind of stuff's available. So we're not going to be doing that. But Basically everything else we can get really awesome upgrades to, which is going to lead me to a company that we're going to partner with for this season that is right down the alley for what we need. So guys, for this season, we partnered with MotivationUSA.com. If you guys never see Motivation, they make 
basically high level components for really dope motorcycles. If you have a fast, expensive motorcycle and you want really cool parts for them, they probably have them. So guys, there's a couple benefits of working with MotivationUSA.com for this build. One, I've got you guys a 5% off discount code. It's WBRGR6. See what we did there? That'll get you guys 5% off. The other benefit with working with them I've already got all the parts for the build. This box is heavy. So I thought it was really cool motivation to actually like believe in this project and sign up. So if you guys support them, it helps support the relationship we have with them. And I've never worked with a company this tightly with a build, but also at the same time, I was like, never have I built a motorcycle that had this much cohesion to what a company is doing. Motivation builds their own dream bikes. I don't think they give them away, but I was like, hey, we're gonna do that same type of thing. So I think it's gonna be an awesome freaking partnership. I've used Motivation in almost every single WBRG bike that we have built. So I was already super familiar with the company and knew that they only ship out quality products. So I already super trusted them. Shout out to Motivation. Uh, we'll have a link in the description. Go check those guys out. We would not be able to do this season's build without those guys. All right, so guys, so as far as how we're gonna work with motivation, a lot of the things that we're gonna be focusing on this motorcycle is some of the things we talked about that makes the R1M the M model. So we got carbon fiber fairings coming. And by, by coming, I mean here. Uh, we are going to remove the swing arm. We're gonna remove the gas tank and get those painted by our paint guy that did a phenomenal job last season. If you guys want to go see what this dude's capable of, go check out our CBR 1000 that we did on season five. This dude is a magician with paint. It's incredible. So we're going to get that uh, R1M look with that brushed aluminum. We're going to have to mix the paint with the carbon fiber fairings. And then once all that comes together, we then got to go to our wrap guy, but we'll handle that all later in the series. Other things we're going to do, we're going to upgrade all the small components, especially the freaking levers. Every liquid on that motorcycle is going to have to get swapped out. All the small stuff like uh, fairing bolts and uh, air filters and levers and spark plugs, all of that is going to be brand new on this motorcycle. I'm not sure if I'm going to replace the clutch yet or not. You guys are gonna have to stay tuned for that. Once we get a couple episodes in, I'm gonna be taking the clutch out and I'm gonna investigate it. Typically with motorcycles like this, the people that ride and buy them aren't the most amazing riders and they sometimes will burn a clutch to hell and back. So I do wanna check the clutch to see if there's any issues with that. So we're gonna do that later in an episode. And we're also gonna be upgrading the braking components. We've got some awesome Brembo rotors and master cylinders inside this box that I cannot wait to get on that motorcycle. It's already fast as hell, but right now, braking is sketchy as everything. So, definitely the main thing we want to get taken care of. I don't think we're going to upgrade the wheels, but we'll have to wait till later in the series to find out if we're able to do that or not. Stay tuned for that. Now... It is the time I have been waiting for. I get to show you guys these concepts that we got made. So, I've been following this dude on Instagram for what seems like forever. His uh, Instagram tag is here. It's Car Design Concepts. I think his name is actually Car. This guy does some of the coolest concept for motorcycle stuff I have ever freaking seen. Here's some of the stuff he's done. I am always blown away by looking at his Instagram. So I reached out to him and I was like, hey man, you know, I do motorcycle YouTube stuff. Would you be able to take an R6, a 2018 model, and turn it into a R6M? And I gave him the R1M design. Obviously he had already seen the stuff, but I gave it to him anyway. Here are some of the concepts he came up with. Also, side note before we get into the concepts. So, I uh, asked him for fairing design concepts because this is what I needed to send to the fairing company that we're working with. So, it does not include that brushed aluminum swing arm. So, just keep that in mind. Let's get to concept one. So, concept one, as you guys can see, it's actually, and I looked into this, 
The R1M does not have all carbon fairings. There's actually some carbon, some black, and then it has the uh, brushed aluminum and the blue accents. This one is probably my favorite one. I love how there's the brushed aluminum on the front, the head fairing. It comes all the way down the gas tank, and then you uh, obviously would have it on the swing arm. This one I absolutely love. As you guys can see, we got the R6M badging on the side of the bike with the Yamaha badging as well, because we do kind of want this bike to... I want people to look at this bike and be like, wait, did that come from Yamaha? This one is absolutely fantastic, and it's so cool to see what the bike could look like, or at least close, uh, once the season is uh, done. All right, next up, as you guys can see, the only change here, same as the old one, but he put the brushed aluminum at the belly pan where it says Yamaha. I'm not a real big fan of this, but it does look exactly like the R1M because there's that metal piece that goes with the actual exhaust, so I know where it came from. I kind of like that blacked out look that went all the way against the bottom, though. Next up, he is incorporating that brushed aluminum at the top of the side fairings. I think this kind of takes away from the brushed aluminum, so I'm definitely not down for this, but obviously you guys let me know in the comments if any of these, like, pique your interest or anything like that. Next up is basically brushed aluminum overload. He swaps going from brushed aluminum at the top of the gas tank in that front fairing to along the sides. I think this would be a phenomenal look. I just don't think it would match too much with the R1M. So I'm going to save this one to do myself later, maybe with my MT-10 or something. Uh, I think this would look really dope in person. But we're going to uh, stray away from this just because we're trying to stay so close to the to the R1M. But I, I know this would look dope. Okay, so next up, as you guys can see, he kept like the top half of the super brushed aluminum look. But then took out the brushed aluminum at the very bottom. So it's like brushed aluminum top half, carbon and black on the bottom. Again, a phenomenal freaking look. And at this point, dude's just playing around because he nailed it on that first concept. And then... We black out the fairing and the lower part, and now it's very just the top of the motorcycle with the brushed aluminum, um, and I think that's the last one. This is what a stock one looks like, not exactly what ours look like, but that's the stock R6, that's the, uh, the mock-up. How freaking cool is that? You guys, please, for the love of God, go follow this guy on Instagram. He makes awesome work. Just as a reference, stock R6, R1M, R6M. How freaking cool is that? Oh my gosh. If you don't think that I'm going to try to take a photo of this motorcycle when we're done with it and put it next to that image and see how close we can get, you have lost your mind. Also, wheels are going to be blue, accenting the blue, exhaust is going to be different. I... Happy Chase is back, boys. Happy Chase is back. All right, guys, that's it for the damage on the bike. That's it for the build plans. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As a note, if you guys want to win this motorcycle, you can go to WBRGarage.com, get a membership, get a piece of merch, and you could win this thing. We have never started a season with so many parts ready to go. <laughs> Bye now. Guys, if you guys want to watch the entire build playlist, you can go in the description. We'll have a link down there. You can see all the episodes for this season. I cannot wait to get started. Next episode, we do a first ride. So you guys stick around. Make sure to subscribe to make sure you get notified when the video comes out. We'll see you a week early on WBRGarage.com and then a week after here on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Later. Outro crew, what do we think? I'm so excited! You know what my favorite part is? What's your favorite part, bud? That's fair. Outro crew, let us know what your favorite thing is. Put an OC in the comment. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!